Alrighty, let's let's get going. So on Friday we started talking about uh, recovery, which basically is uh, the process for getting uh, dealing with crashes in a database. Um, so today we're going to basically finish up this uh, this section, hopefully, uh, time permitting anyway. Uh, before I do that, uh, project two uh, was due last night. Um, project three will be posted uh, by tomorrow night. It, the due date will be mid-April. Uh, more details to follow. Uh, homework six uh, should be posted tonight. It will be due a week from now. And uh, if you've done project, the extra credit portion of project two, uh, please uh, schedule a 20-minute meeting, uh, minute meeting with me. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to use my Doodle page, uh, doodle.com slash um, So basically, uh, in order to do that, uh, just go there, find a 20-minute time slot when uh, your entire group is free, and schedule a meeting. Okay, um, any questions? So uh, project three is basically going to be optimization. Um, you're going to be asked to implement a specific set of optimizations, and then I'm going to basically do a sort of a battle royale between everyone's, uh, everyone's uh, submission to see who, who can be the fastest. Um, okay, so, uh, just to recap, the, the primary goal of transactions is to provide a set of guarantees commonly referred to as ACID. Um, that is to say, you want every action of a transaction to either happen entirely or to not happen at all, atomicity. Uh, you want consistency, so if the transaction itself uh, preserves the consistency of the database, then uh, no sort of interleaving of, of the transaction with any other uh, should violate consistency. Um, isolation, so uh, transaction should be entirely independent, the execution of a transaction uh, should be entirely independent of uh, the execution of all other transactions, and uh, durability, so if uh, we receive an assurance that a transaction has in fact committed, uh, then the transaction had better uh, persist any sort of crash or failure in the system. Now the big solution, the, the high-level solution to this process, uh, to providing durability um, and cons uh, atomicity, was this idea of write-ahead logging, uh, where before we write a uh, change for a particular uh, data page to disk, uh, we first write a log record, um, we for first force a log record to disk uh, that describes roughly uh, what that update is. So before we um, before we uh, write a change to disk, uh, we want to make sure that uh, the, the log record for that particular update is also uh, written to disk, so that we can ensure that a transaction that has committed uh, will actually end up uh, visible on disk, even if the system has crashed. Even if the system has crashed, uh, we also want to ensure that every single log record. Um, Sorry, uh, we want to make sure that the log records for a transaction um, are, are visible on disk so that we can go back and undo the effects of a transaction uh, that hasn't fully completed yet. So, uh, looking at this from the sort of big picture perspective, um, there are basically three components in this system. The log, uh, the database on disk, and uh, the memory resident portions of the database. Uh, the log is basically going to record uh, a sequence of operations, and each operation uh, has to do with a particular transaction. Uh, it has a type, which is either an update to a particular page, um, commit, abort, uh, and there's a couple of, sort of uh, log-related things, that, uh, a couple of uh, recovery-related things that we also talked about. Um, and of course, if it's an update, it also includes information about uh, where the update occurred, what the updated uh, data values looked like, and uh, both before and after the update, so that we can do both uh, redos and undos. Um, on the disk, 
uh, every single data page is annotated with a log sequence number. Uh, the log sequence, no, sorry, there's, every log record has a log sequence number, and every data page is annotated with the last log sequence number uh, that applied some change to that particular data page on disk. Uh, there's also the master record, which we're going to talk about in a moment. Um, the database in RAM uh, keeps track of a list of all of the active transactions, uh, which includes the transaction ID, uh, the last log entry that um, the transaction wrote to the log, uh, as well as a, a status for that transaction, whether it's committed, uh, whether it's aborted, or whether it's still running. We also keep track of all of the dirty pages. Uh, and for that dirty page, for every dirty page, we keep track of the last log entry uh, to make a change uh, to that particular page. And finally, we keep track of the last log entry to make it to disk. So every, uh, every log entry with a lower sequence number than this uh, has been uh, guaranteed to be flushed to disk. Uh, any questions on the, the big picture? Or anything up to this, this point? I assume everyone's just tired from uh, staying up all night. Okay, well, um, if it's any constellation, uh, it's similar, similar constraints. Okay, so, uh, check, uh, right. So, the recovery process, um, and I believe someone mentioned this last week, um, the recovery process uh, has to go through the log. It'll have to um, potentially start at the very beginning of the log and go through every single thing uh, in that log. And if you just keep writing more and more entries to that log, then this log is just going to get really, really big. Uh, big enough that the recovery process could take arbitrarily long. And so what, what we need is some way of sort of trimming that down a little bit. And so what we're going to do is uh, keep what's known as a checkpoint. So every so often, uh, we're going to uh, create uh, basically a, a, a snapshot of the, the current database state. And that basically means uh, the transaction table uh, and the dirty page table, uh, as well as um, any log entries that haven't been flushed yet. And so in order to do that, we're going to first uh, mark down a, uh, a big, we're going to first insert a begin checkpoint record into the log. And that basically uh, indicates the point uh, that the checkpoint is taken with respect to. Uh, so remember that uh, anytime we try and do an operation on disk, it's going to take us time. We don't want to stop all of the transaction processing uh, from, uh, from happening at, uh, while we're doing the checkpoint. Because these checkpoints, I mean, we have to take a full snapshot of essentially every single uh, change that the database is currently working on. And so if we want to do that, if we want any sort of transaction processing to continue, uh, we need to have some way of sort of uh, marking first where the snapshot is taken with respect to. So begin checkpoint indicates that the checkpoint has started. After that, we'll start flushing uh, information to the log, uh, describing essentially uh, what the current state of the database is, uh, namely the transaction table, the dirty page table, uh, as well as uh, all of the log entries that haven't been flushed yet. And then the end checkpoint uh, record is basically going to indicate that um, is basically going to contain, uh, the, it's one record that contains all of that state and basically indicates that the transaction has been fully uh, flushed to disk. So as soon as you see an end checkpoint, you, you basically have all of the information that you need to reconstruct uh, essentially almost all of the state of the log um, at the point that the begin checkpoint log record was inserted. Uh, does that make sense? So this basically indicates uh, when the checkpoint when the, the, the checkpoint is being taken with respect to and then the end checkpoint uh, actually encodes all of the information uh, that uh, that that particular transaction, <coughs> sorry, that that, uh, uh, it actually encodes all of the state so that you can, um, uh, 
Uh, okay, so um, basically what I'm trying to get across here is that this is, this is not um, a single uh, record that encodes the entire snapshot. Um, now, essentially, the, the, while the checkpoint may not necessarily force any data to disk, um, it does force the log to disk, so you can still essentially recover any changes uh, that were made. Um, and you know, I mentioned this master record thing. Uh, on disk, we basically need to store uh, the, the address or the log sequence number of the last checkpoint that was made. So basically anything up to, um, anything up to uh, prior to that checkpoint, um, we can ignore during the recovery phase, or almost ignore. Uh, okay, so that having been said, how do we do recovery? Yes? Uh, how do we do this checkpointing? Uh, checkpointing will happen, uh, usually this is a configurable parameter for the database. Um, a DBA will basically sit down and see how frequently data gets updated, how fast these log records get generated, and depending on... So you don't want to be doing checkpointing every second or so. Usually you want to set it to be maybe every... Uh... I mean, again, it depends. It depends how long the checkpointing process takes. It depends on... Um how fast your log grows. So you don't want your log to get to two terabytes before you start checkpointing, because then it's going to be a really, really expensive checkpoint. Um, on the other hand, I mean, there's a trade-off. The log, uh, it's a trade-off between how fast the log grows, how long it takes to do the checkpoint, and how much, uh, how many, uh, what fraction of your computational resources get consumed uh, to perform the checkpoint. And usually you want to just basically adjust the, the adjust how frequently you do your checkpoint so that you're sort of, uh, so that it's minimally invasive. So it's not like on every transaction we do a checkpoint? Oh, no, 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 no. So every, every transaction, uh, so, no, no. Um, that would, that would become very expensive very quickly. Um, any other questions? Okay. Uh, all right, so let's let's talk about the recovery process. And so this, what I'm describing is is basically a protocol known as Aries. So we're we're basically go, going to um, do the recovery in three phases. Uh, the first phase, we're going to try and reconstruct the state of the database at the point of the crash. So we're going to start at the last checkpoint. And then we're going to replay uh, or scan through the log entries that have occurred since that last checkpoint in order to reconstruct um, all of the in-memory state of the database, uh, the transaction table, the dirty page table, and the flushed LSN. Well, in this case, the flushed LSN is basically going to be the checkpoint. The second step is to redo all actions that have been um, completed up to this point. So we've reconstructed the dirty page table, and we're going to find the earliest log sequence number that hasn't been flushed to disk. We're going to start there, and we're going to go forward through time, replaying all of the log entries and redoing every single operation in all of those, in all of them. And the final thing that we need to do, uh, there may have been some transactions that were open when the crash happened. We want to undo those. We want to make sure that those transactions are no longer visible. So we're going to start, take a look at the, the transaction table, and we're going to um, basically go back through time and undo all of the operations uh, performed by any one of those transactions. OK, so let me go, go into this in a little bit more detail. So for the analysis, uh, process. The checkpoint gives us uh, the, trend, uh, the state of the transaction table and the dirty page table at the checkpoint itself. So we're going to start there. We're going to go uh, step by step through the log, looking at every log entry, 
Um, and if it's an end record, well, that means a transaction in the transaction table uh, completed. It got fully uh, flushed to the, the log. So basically, the, the end record means that that transaction is no longer relevant to us. If the transaction um, is not known to us, then that means some transaction got started that we don't know about. So we have to add that transaction. Either add that transaction table to the, the, the table if it's not already present, um, right. uh, so if we don't know about that transaction, then we need to add it to the transaction table. Um, even if we do know about it, um, that operation may have, uh, we need to record uh, the, the log sequence number of, of the last operation that that trans transaction has performed. Uh, so the, call the transaction table uh, contains uh, the last log sequence number that that transaction has performed. So we're going, to, um, we're going to update that value if we see a new record for that transaction. And finally, if the transaction status, uh, if, if the, the log record indicates that, that the transaction has committed, then uh, we, we should also update the transaction status. And finally, um, we also need to modify the, the dirty page table. So if, um, if a particular page is updated and isn't in the dirty page table, then we need to create an entry for it. Uh, and that entry is going to contain uh, the first log entry that um, the first log entry that modified that particular page, and the transaction, uh, sorry, the page ID. All right. Um, and that's pretty much it for the analysis phase. We just go through the log, and we reconstruct the entire database state as of that particular point. All right. The redo phase. How does the redo phase work? So. We essentially want to uh, repeat every step in the log uh, so that we can reconstruct uh, both the state of the, the in-memory database, the, the state of the buffer pool um, as of the crash, uh, as well as re, uh, reconstruct everything on disk. So we're going to um, reapply every single update. Um, even if the transaction in question has aborted, um, then we're still going to redo uh, those updates. Now, if the transaction has aborted, uh, then there's a good chance there will be these compensation log records, uh, which basically tell us how how to do how to undo that particular uh, the operations that were, were performed. Um, so, we're going to re reapply all of the updates, but we're also going to reapply all of these compensation log records. And every single action basically just gets redone by uh, reapplying the logged action, updating the page LSN of that particular page, and uh, fortunately, uh, we don't actually need to do any sort of additional logging operations uh, because the log entries have already been created. If a crash occurs at this point, we can just go back in time, we'll essentially redo everything from uh, the start. Okay, uh, so we're to actually do this, um, we're going to start from the, the smallest. So the dirty page table basically contains the log sequence number of every single operation that has uh, modified that particular page. So we're going to start from the lowest log entry that uh, appears in that dirty page table. And every single operation is going to be reapplied. Um, we can skip a couple of uh, certain types of operations. So, if the operation appears, uh, if the operate, if the, if we're scanning and we encounter a log entry that uh, updates a page that isn't in our dirty page table, then we can pretty much uh, skip that because there's no. Uh, we've recreated the entire state of the database, and if the affected page isn't in the dirty page table, then that means there aren't any pending writes to it. That that update operation has already been flushed, essentially. Um, if the affected page is in the dirty page table, um, but, the, uh, but the log sequence number of that particular page, uh, sorry, the, the most recent update uh, to that particular page 
uh, the earliest update is greater than uh, the log sequence number of the, the uh, operation that we're redoing, um, then that, uh, so just to, to recap, the dirty page table basically, for every page, it contains the log sequence number of the earliest update, sorry, the earliest uh, log entry to write to that particular page. And if we're replaying the log, and the earliest update to write to that particular page um, is higher than the current uh, log entry, then that means that that log entry, again, has already been flushed. So essentially, in either of these cases, uh, the log, that log entry, its effects have already been flushed to disk. And the final case is that um, if on disk, if the, the version of that particular page that appears on disk has a page LSN that's higher uh, than the log uh, sequence number of the entry that we're currently looking at, higher than or equal to, uh, once again, it essentially means that that page has already been flushed. So we have a couple of different ways of, of determining that that particular record has been, uh, update operation has already been flushed to disk. And if any of those are true, uh, then we can basically just skip that log record. Okay, um, the undo process. So this is where the fun starts. Um, we're going to start by generating a list of all of the last log sequence numbers of all of the uh, transactions that were still uncommitted uh, at the point of, uh, that we're still uncommitted uh, at the point of the crash. So we're going to look at our transaction table, and any transaction uh, that doesn't have a status of commit, we're going to look at the la uh, build up uh, a set uh, list of the last log sequence number uh, to be modified that, by that particular transaction. Then, uh, step by step, we're going to basically pick, uh, one at a time, we're going to pick the largest log sequence number in this list. So we're essentially going to have this, this sort of priority queue that gives us the highest log sequence number of, um, of anything in this transaction. If the log sequence number uh, that we pick points to um, a CLR, then we essentially need to um, um, then we need to redo that uh, compensation log. No, sorry. Uh, then that compensation log record is right. So the the compensation log record will either point to a. Uh, so if we've reached the last compensation log record, we can write an end record. The transaction is complete. Um, otherwise, then we've encountered uh, a com uh, So we need to scan through basically all of the compensation log records to make sure that all of them are there. Um, if all of them are there, then we have by this point successfully undone uh, that particular transaction and we don't need to do anything else. So we're going to scan through all of them and make sure that they're all there. We're also going to make sure that uh, the so. The other possibility is that this compensation log record is going to point back uh, to a log sequence number of an update uh, that has previously been uh, not compensated for. So we're going to go, uh, so if we've encountered, uh, basically any records that we encounter in this list that aren't compensation log records are basically going to be updates. And if we encounter an update through a traversal of this list, uh, then 
we're going to need uh, to actually perform uh, the, the undo of those updates. Basically means that that uh, particular update hasn't been undone yet. We'll, do the, we'll undo the update and we'll be sure to write a, a compensation log record to the log uh, just as we do before. And uh, basically we're going to essentially just go back through the list each time uh, finding the highest um, log sequence number uh, in, in, uh, in the list of, operate, of updates or compensation log records that we need to scan through. Okay, that may have been a little bit uh, fuzzy, so let me make it a little bit more clear with an example. So we have a sequence of operations here. Uh, starting, I'm going to call the begin checkpoint, the last checkpoint to successfully complete. Uh, is there a question? Um, the last checkpoint to successfully complete, I'm going to say that that's log sequence number zero. So essentially, the, the log contains the following sequence of operations. Um, begin the checkpoint, end the checkpoint. Transaction one is going to write to page five. Transaction two writes to page three. Uh, then transaction one aborts. Um, we have a compensation log record undoing transaction one's operation uh, for log sequence number um, 10, this one. Uh, then transaction one ends. Um, transaction 3 is going to write to uh, page 1, and transaction 2 is going to write to page 5, and then boom, uh, the system crashes. Someone trips over a power cord. So let's. Um, so now the database starts back up, and we need to uh, we need to reconstruct the entire state of the database. So we're going to start with the analysis phase. Now we know as of this checkpoint, we can reconstruct the state at that checkpoint. Now let's say that that uh, checkpoint has uh, two trans knows about two transactions, transaction one and transaction two. And both of those have done some other operations uh, at some point before the, the, the checkpoint. So we're gonna start at the end checkpoint, uh, uh, sorry, at the begin checkpoint. And we're going to iterate uh, over every operation and uh, basically reapply uh, the, the effects of that operation uh, to the current database state. So transaction one on this update writes to P5. So that makes the last log sequence number uh, 10. Yes, that's the log sequence number of this transaction. Uh, same thing happens for transaction two. Oh, uh, and when transaction one writes P5, uh, we report P5 to the dirty page table. And similarly, when transaction two uh, writes to page three, we record that. These have no effect on the state. Transaction one abort, we'll uh, make a note of that. It's going to, uh, now the fact that we've encountered uh, transaction one's end means that we can remove transaction one from the uh, transaction table, uh, but we still don't know if page five has been flushed to disk properly, so that stays in the dirty page table. Um, transaction three now writes to P1, and well, we we haven't encountered P1 at all. Um, we haven't encountered oh, sorry we haven't encountered transaction three at all. Um, so we're going to have to insert it into the transaction table. Uh, transaction two is now going to write to page five. Uh, so once again, we're going to um, update transaction two. And this is basically the analysis phase. Uh, any questions on the analysis phase? Okay, uh, so here's a question for you. Um, what happens if we have a transaction, let's call it T4, uh, that starts after begin checkpoint, after the begin checkpoint. Yes? Oh, well, it's just, just some point after uh, sequence number zero. After the point when this, this occurred, uh, a, trend, a transaction T4 starts. Mm -hmm. 
So what happens if it reads only? Hmm? Yeah, so uh, the transaction for um, before the crash occurred. So not only over here, uh, by this point, um, before before any of this uh, this recovery business uh, and before the crash, uh, the original trend. Let's say that the original transaction table was T1, T2, T3, T4. So what is a is it a problem that we're unable to recover T4? Is it a problem that in the reconstructed state, T4 doesn't appear here. Sorry? If it is reading, T4 is reading, then there's no problem. Okay, yeah, why? It is not affecting any. Okay, so it doesn't affect the database in any meaningful way. What if T4 does uh, have a write somewhere in, in the transaction? Then it's a problem. Well, is it? Well, so it starts, uh, T4 would start regardless after okay. begin checkpoint. So, I mean, if T4 hadn't started, uh, if T4 had started before begin checkpoint, it would be in the transaction table. But why is it okay uh, for us not to recover T4, or not to uh, get T4 back here, even if T4 would eventually have written something. I think uh, it is not committed, right? Well, it's, it hasn't committed, yes. So, so again, there is no problem. Uh, and uh, can you be more clear about why? We, we haven't write, written anything. I mean, we haven't. Exactly. So even if T4 would have eventually written something, um, it doesn't appear in the transaction table. Oh, sorry, even if T4 would have eventually written something, um, it hasn't modified the database in any appreciable way by this point, so we're fine. Um, now, what if it had, and so do you then, um, so uh, I started without T3 in the transaction table. Uh, is it clear? Uh, how, how did we get T3 in the transaction table here? And this, this is sort of related to before. So T3 wasn't present in the checkpoint when we started. It wasn't present in the checkpoint. But as we were scanning through here, uh, we were able to deduce that a transaction T3 did exist. Where did that information come from? Log Sorry? Log fifty. Log fifty. Okay. So basically, as we're scanning through the log, um, if the transaction hasn't written anything, then we don't care about it. And if it has written something, then we can see that the transaction exists and reinsert it into our transaction table. Is that clear? All right. Um, but if the transaction starts after the begin checkpoint, yep. and if it writes, then we don't insert that transaction into the transaction table. We do. So that's what happens with T3. So uh, T3, uh, T1 and T2 are present in the in the transaction table as of the checkpoint. T1 aborts, and it completes the abort process, so we can remove it safely from the transaction table. T3 isn't in the transaction table, but in the course of scanning through the log, we see an, a, an operation for a transaction that we have no, we've never seen before. So if that happens, we know that some transaction T3 occurred, uh, has, it has a unique identifier of some sort, uh, so we know that it has started, and so we can insert it into our transaction table, even though we don't have a formal, uh, this transaction was created. This transaction has started log entry. So if any transaction writes, we have to insert it into I mean, we have to insert it into Exactly. If it's not already present. And if it is already present, 
uh, then we're still, we still want to update the transaction table uh, to point to the most recent logup uh, operation that that transaction performed. Okay, the redo process. So now we, we start the redo process by consulting our dirty page table and finding the first log entry that appears in this dirty page table, the earliest log, excuse me, the earliest log entry that modified a page in the, the dirty page table. In this case, that's operation 10. So we're going to take a look at operation 10. Uh, T1 modifies P5 in some way. And we're going to redo it. Now, trans you, you may say, transaction 1 has already aborted. Well, that's OK. And you'll see why in a moment. So we're going to redo that operation. Now, uh, T2 writes to P3. We're going to do redo that operation just as before. Uh, we can skip the abort log entry. Now, T1, uh, we have this compensation log record that tells us to undo the effects of transactions, uh, transaction 1's modification uh, to page 10. So we do that. Now, uh, you might ask why you want this, uh, why you want to first uh, undo the operation, uh, sorry, first redo the operation and then undo it later on. The reason for that is that the law, um, you essentially want to reconstruct the entire state of the database up to that point. And this makes it much faster to recover. Um, these undo operations, the, these compensation log records, allow us to so basically what happens let's say what happens if the disk crashes while you are writing this page while you are writing these changes uh, sorry not that uh, if the computer crashes while you are writing these changes you won't have completed the changes entirely on the other hand uh, those changes might be specified with respect to uh, the undo process might not completely overwrite the effects of, of transaction one. It may be the case that some other transaction comes along and makes some changes uh, and you can undo, undo them in a, in a much more compact way. So essentially we're going to just replay everything. Uh, and by replaying everything we can be absolutely sure that the state of the database, both in memory and on disk, is exactly uh, the way we left it uh, when the crash occurred. So suppose uh, while writing CLR and do the uh, database crashes, then what happens? Well, uh, sorry, uh, while writing the CLR? Yeah. Uh, while writing the CLR, uh, the log record, or while writing the... The log record. Ah, so we can essentially detect whether the record has been um, successfully written by using some uh, verification technique like, uh, so we talked about hashing. Um, uh, this, there's uh, hashing, if you use a weak hash, uh, you can do, uh, are you familiar with the idea of uh, checkpointing, uh, sorry, uh, checksumming? So a checksum is basically a really weak uh, type of hash. Um, and it can be, it's basically a small number that, uh, that you compute from some big value. And basically, the, like a hash, you should get the same number from the same big value. Uh, so usually what happens when these log records are written, we'll compute a checksum, uh, we'll write it as part of the record, and the chance that um, if the record doesn't get fully written, it'll be corrupted in some way, there will be some errors in it, and the checksum won't be correct. And so we can detect that. And, uh, or it shouldn't be correct, and there's a high probability that it won't be correct. So even when the log, uh, log is uh, written successfully, do we check the checksum? Yeah. So basically, going through the every time we read a log entry, we make sure that the checksum is correct. Otherwise, that's where the log terminated, basically. Yes? Uh, so basically, we do not modify the database unless we have got uh, unless a checking form. So up to this point, we've... Um, wait, sorry? Uh, when do we modify the database, actually? 
Ah, okay, so the question is when do we modify the database? Um, so we're going to modify the database when we see this. We're going to overwrite the current value of page five with the effects of transaction one. Now that can be handled entirely in memory. That, that uh, um, update might be handled entirely in memory. When we get to this, we're going to modify page three um, with the effects of transaction two. Again, we can keep that in memory. Um, when we get to here, we need to make sure that that, that, that update is flushed and then that the, uh, oh, sorry, when we get to here, we're going to undo the effects of transaction one. Um, when we get to here, we need to make sure that that page is flushed. So these all steps are done in memory, right? They're, they're done in memory, uh, except where, where necessary. Uh, uh, sorry, if, if we reach an end operation, we need to flush that back to disk. Okay. And all, all the transactions before the checkpoint are there in the disk, I mean in the database? You're not guaranteed that, no. Um, so it's entirely, I, I, I don't have it in this example, but it's entirely possible that the dirty page table uh, contains uh, operations that happened before the checkpoint. In which case, when you reload the checkpoint, they'll be present in the dirty page table. What about the transactions? Those are completed before the checkpoint. Those are there in the disk. Uh, you mean the transaction table? Uh, no, the transactions, those are already completed before the checkpoint. Oh, the, sorry, the, yes, so the transactions that have successfully completed uh, before, the, before the checkpoint starts, uh, those you can ignore. Any transaction that hasn't been that uh, so a transaction could be still running while the checkpoint is is in play, in which case you might have to go back. Yes. Uh, there may be a chance that uh, when the uh, new operation is being done in the memory and before before the execution of step D one A, it's like it's still in the memory and it's not being flushed to the disk. Uh, what what if uh, what happens in the case when? Uh, when the current system crashes uh, before the D1 and the uh, instruction happens? Um, if the system crashes before this point? Yeah. Then essentially the entire system will start from the very beginning. It'll do the redo the analysis and it will re... Actually, that's a, that's a very good question. Um, and one that I was actually going to ask you um, in a slide or two. Uh, so, so does the analysis phase do anything to disk? No. It's purely read. Now the redo phase does do things uh, to pages in, in memory, but does it change, um, if the system crashes while you're doing, uh, while you're redoing, uh, while you're in the redo phase, um, where would it start when it uh, resumes again? If it if it crashes at this point, has has anything changed to the log? It depends whether we have written the log on the disk. Well, we've this so this is where the the last log entry that got successfully written to disk before the crash occurred, and have we written any any new log entries to disk? Will we write anything uh, else in the redo phase? Sorry, um, I actually lied. You don't actually need to flush uh, at T1 end. You could still potentially do. You might flush. Uh, that it, it's entirely possible that, that you will flush, um, but you don't have to. Um, but is uh, have we done anything to the lock? Um, so what happens if, so the next time we get to the, the redo phase, what, what will our dirty page table look like? Hmm? Empty? So assuming that no, no writes occur, occur uh, assuming that we don't flush anything to disk over the course of, of execution, and if, if we crash anywhere in the redo phase, what will our dirty page table look like? when we restart the redo phase. Exactly the same, exactly. Um, so any sort of operation that happens, uh, even if we crash midway through, all of these operations are sort of uh, 
monotonic. By the uh, monotonic, by the time you get to the, uh, you can rewrite, replay this entire log as many times as you want. You can replay parts of it. You can replay, um, well, you can replay parts of it. You can replay it, it in its entirety. And in either case, uh, you're going to get exactly the same thing if you successfully replay the entire thing. And because the dirty page table uh, and starts out in exactly the same way, you're guaranteed that, um, that that's going to be the case. Um, now you might certainly, uh, you might certainly f uh, discover that this write has already occurred. So when you, you, uh, you don't, um, so the, the update operations recall, uh, they only specify small chunks within a page. So you're still going to have to read the page in from disk before you perform that update. But um, if you then discover that this operation has already been performed, recall each page has uh, a log sequence number of the last write that occurred to it. So if it's already been flush, okay, you're done. That, that, you can skip that operation. Uh, but essentially, you can, you can do this redo phase as many times as you like. And because nothing is actually changing, um, it doesn't matter if you crash during it. Is that clear? So, yes. So after the crash, we start with analysis process or analysis? Yeah, so if any time there is a crash, the first thing you do is analyze the log to reconstruct the transaction table and the dirty page table. And then the second thing you do is redo. Okay, so we're going to keep going. Uh, we're going to, uh, T3 is going to write page one. Uh, we'll redo that. And transaction two is going to write page five. We'll redo that. Okay, now the final stage, undo, probably the trickiest. Um, all right, let's try and get through this fast. Um, so I've, I've compressed a couple of, of lines here, but this is exactly the same sequence of operations as before. Now, unlike the, uh, the undo and, uh, sorry, the, unlike the analysis and, and redo phases, uh, we're gonna start here from uh, the very end. So the crash occurred here. So now we go back in time and we want to undo transaction two. So the first transact, the, the transaction with the highest um, ID is 60. Uh, that ID is, uh, this transaction two is right to P5. Um, and so we have to undo that. Now in order to undo that, remember we have to write a compensation log record to the log before we perform that undo. We're gonna do that. Then we're gonna perform the undo and we're gonna make the, the necessary modifications. Um, moving on, uh, transaction three, do exactly the same thing. Compensation log record uh, for T3. Um, and now, now that we've undone this, transaction three has successfully been undone because transaction three hasn't done anything else. Uh, transaction two, but uh, on the other hand, uh, also has this right to P3. So we're gonna uh, next step over to that. Uh, but before we get there, a crash occurs. So now we've done part, we've recovered some things, and we've actually modified the log uh, up to this point. Uh, but the, the, the modifications are exactly identical to the modifications that you'd see if there was an abort for T2 and an abort for T3 right here. So this sequence of operations is exactly the same. So when the system recovers again, all we, all we need to do is add another compensation, well, We'll redo everything, and we'll get exactly back to this point in the log. Well, uh, from the redo phase, and then all we have to do is undo that operation, and we are set. So we've already answered most of these questions. Um, there's a couple of uh, I'll bring these up next week. Um, basically, how. Uh, sorry, uh, on Wednesday, try and think about, um, look at this algorithm and try and think about how you'd uh, reduce the amount of work that you have to do uh, to redo various operations or undo various operations. So that, that's See, Wednesday.